Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here for the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 68 for this week. Uh, of course, a uh, video producer here in the Pittsburgh area for International, International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, a whole bunch of other projects uh, that I have going on at PittsburghWrestling.com and the newly under construction IndieWrestling.us. And with me is my compatriot down in San Antonio, Texas. He is, uh, are you the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling or one of the voices of Inspire Pro Wrestling? I, I know some other voices that would probably dispute me on that so i'll just say one of the you're, you're, right? you're one of the voices in the head of inspire pro wrestling down in san antonio texas Eamon payton Eamon two please on the twitters how you doing i i can say i'm a voice of inspire pro home video i guess that's there you that's go right. i mean they, inspire, they hear me more that you can than, say yeah. inspire pro home video is pretty fantastic though um but anyways this is the indie mayhem show where we like to talk to people in the indie wrestling scene and all kinds of aspects and talk about indie wrestling because we dig it and we are uh, kind of i guess a part of it we can say Say a little bit here. Uh, you can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com along with the other fine, fine podcasts and video shows that we've been doing here. There's a lot of stuff going on. I invite you to go check it out and uh, find the thing you dig uh, and tell your friends about it. Uh, you can subscribe to this, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, all kinds of places. Look for the Indie Mayhem Show. Links over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Big thanks to Basic Sickness for the intro, outro music. Check them out at BasicSickness.com. And you can join us here typically live about 11, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern time at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com every Tuesday. Not this week. We are actually pre-recording this, but that's okay. Uh, might skip it up, you know, switch it up every once in a while. Uh, so let's get into it. We got a returning guest tonight. Is that right, Eamon? We do. Uh, we have a returning guest uh, this week on the uh, Indie Mayhem show. Uh, in fact, it was about, I would say, this time last year that we uh, we last talked to this person. Uh, and when we did, uh, this person was just starting in the wrestling business, uh, you know, with a, with a handful of matches under her belt. Uh, and we wanted to kind of catch up with her a year later uh, and, and see how everything's for us. So uh, once again, welcome to the Indie Mayhem show, the one and only Delilah Doom. Delilah, how are you this evening? Hi! <laughs> Glad to have you back. <laughs> I'm awesome. How are you guys doing? Really great. Really good. Uh, but like we mentioned, uh, yeah, uh, around la- this time last year we had you on and, and, you know, you first starting out in the professional wrestling, I guess the best way to kind of to start this is uh, how's professional wrestling been, tweet- uh, been treating you lately, I should say? It's been going great. I've been given a lot of opportunities for how new I am to the business, so it's been really awesome. I've um, been training hard still. Just... Uh, Taking it one day at a time. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, and, and there's been a lot of developments, obviously, with your career uh, uh, since we last talked to you. Uh, I know, I know. Now uh, you spent a lot of your time training at the uh, the Shofunaki Dojo uh, in San Antonio, and we've had a couple guests on the show that have uh, are members of that dojo as well. Uh, uh, what's it been like training with uh, Funaki? It's been amazing. He is he is a great teacher. Um, I've definitely have come a long way since I started with him. Uh, he's a lot of fun, and we, we work a lot on like our, you know, perfecting our basics, our technique. Uh, he teaches a lot of submissions and uh, judo uh, based moves and stuff like that. It's it's good. It's been good for me. Awesome, and and from what I hear, at least, uh, you know, his style is a lot, um, and his training is a lot towards you know, getting to the to the top level to like WWE, and we've seen. Um, for some that have seen him, you know, he was a big part in uh, bringing Kenta over, you know, and, and, and having him adjust to the American style. Do you get that a lot in your training as well, like sort of, you know, uh, wrestling for that for that mainstream wrestling kind of style? Yes. Um, you know, his goal is to get us, I mean, if we ever reach that point, is to get us WWE ready. Um, a lot of the drills uh, that we do, he takes um, from NXT, actually. So they are NXT-based drills. Um, that he teaches us that we go over. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. hard. <laughs> no, definitely, and, and, and it's definitely got to be a, a, a really interesting uh, uh, thing to work with him. Um, I also want to bring up the fact that uh, since uh, we last had you on the show, it seems you've been you know getting out everywhere, uh, especially uh, in Texas, but also I know you've wrestled in uh, Louisiana a couple times. Uh, even you uh, debuted in California recently. 
uh, what's it been like to sort of sort of travel the road and, and, and work all these different places? It seems, you know, there's a, you know, every weekend there's a new place you're, you're at, you're at. It's really awesome. Especially, like I said, I'm so new and people are, are giving me these opportunities to travel, to work with, you know, these awesome talent. Um, it's really humbling. It's, it's more than I could ever ask for. <laughs> Definitely. And, and are there any, um, I guess, are there any sort of big takeaways you've gotten from sort of, you know, uh, your, your time on the road and stuff like that? Um, I've just, you know, I just take in everything that I, that I see that people tell me, you know, I'm always, I always want to learn. So whenever I have someone who's been in the business for a while, uh, who's willing to give me tips, uh, I, I just sit with my ears open and I'm like, please, any critiques, anything, even if it's terrible things you want to tell me about myself, go for <laughs> it so I can learn and get better. <laughs> Definitely, absolutely. Is there any uh, is there any wrestlers that maybe you faced or, or you know been even been in a locker room with that sort of stick out as ones that have sort of helped you or, or, or grown you along the way? Uh, I had a match with Athena recently, and I have to say it was one of the. It, I was so scared. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing, and it was definitely an eye opening experience. Um, after a match, I think I gained a little bit more confidence in myself. She helped me a lot. Uh, and Barbie as well. I've had a few matches with her, and it's been awesome being able to work with her because she, she's done a lot as well. And, and, you know, with them being able to, you know, help me out, it's it's awesome. And I, I really, am, you know, it's just nice of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, those are, you know, top-level, you know, sort of competitors that are breaking out, especially, you know, the likes of Athena that's, you know. yeah shimmer shine you know the list goes on and on yeah it was i was just really uh grateful to have those experiences to be able to work with them to learn from them definitely uh, uh going into some of the stuff you've been also doing uh, uh, for inspire pro wrestling i do want to bring up uh since we last talked uh, i think it was actually before you debuted for inspire pro at, uh, at the last in their blood uh but also you you are a, a big member of uh one of the leading staples in inspire pro wrestling the new movement <laughs> uh, led up led up by chris true chris true biz uh what's it been like uh, uh being part of that um it's fun <laughs> chris true is is an awesome manager you know he's really good on the mic he he's really good at learning how to talk to people um you know we have cherry and jiggle james and keith lee they all bring something different to the table so it's a fun little group <laughs> that i think we have Definitely, and you guys have seemed to gain a lot of popularity, especially in, in Inspire Pro. Every you know, every show, the crowd seems you know to be behind you guys, really. Yeah, <laughs> I think they used to hate us, but maybe they're starting to. <laughs> <a little. laughs> well, well, you turn turn the corner, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, but no, that's that's really good to see. Um, another thing I definitely wanted to talk with you about, actually, me and Sword brought this up last week on the Indie Mayhem show, and you actually came up in the conversation was uh, uh, the talk about sort of social media presence. Uh, I know that one of the things Sorg always points out is is the stuff that you do on social media and 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 a lot of, we talk about a lot about building a brand and and how that's that's an important aspect to it. Um, what do you think of you know? Do you think you find that sort of the same? You you have that sort of the same philosophy when it comes to you know putting yourself out there with like promos and and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, with social media, you can post something and one person will like it, and then all of a sudden you're getting all these retweets and all these people from all over the country adding you. I've, I've gotten all these followers who it's great to network with and, you know, mm -hmm. try to get known or seen by a different company over here or over here. So it's definitely, it's helpful to get my name out there, or to, you know, anybody to get their name out there. Definitely. Now, one of the things I, I always talk about, so we, we talk about like kind of characters using these kinds of tools and everything, and uh, I was really impressed that this came up whenever this did uh, uh, your your mall video uh, from a while ago. <laughs> it's one of my favorite indie promotion videos I've seen in a while. And uh, I, I don't know if you had much help on this or, or what it was, uh, you know, f as far as the concept and everything. Now, this is your, like, and the, if you're looking for it, it's Delilah Doom is, like, totally ready uh on youtube if you're looking for it uh and i believe wasn't that robin sparkles let's go to the mall in the background uh apparently preparing for your match with solo solo darling if i'm getting this right here yes sir <laughs> so how did something like this come about like something in depth as this 
you even have the pictures from the photo booth pop up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, I definitely, I had help um, from my good friend Donnie Brooks and our friend Summer. Mm -hmm. So uh, they helped video it for me and edit it really awesomely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not really good with technology, so <laughs> thanks to them, it, it looks awesome. <laughs> but no, it's definitely cool. And, and you know, being able to, I think also with the, the character that you have, it's, it's so easy to sort of, you know, be able to brand yourself and stuff like that. Uh, and, and, and get yourself out there more because you have such a, a, a character that I think people can attach themselves to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, so uh, one of the recurring questions we started uh, uh, having for the past couple months on the show uh, asking our guests is, uh, uh, what are you watching currently, uh, wrestling-wise? Uh, is there anything that you specifically uh, have been checking out and, and, and for studying or just recreation? Uh, uh, is there anything specific that uh, you tend to be watching nowadays? Um, well, I always watch NXT. Uh, I, I watch that over Raw and SmackDown. And then um, Thomas Shy and I, we watch a lot of uh, Japanese wrestling. Um, I like to watch William Regal. Re really, bleh, William Regal? <laughs> hey there. Um, and Chris Jericho and Eddie Guerrero. Those are my favorites to study and watch. Uh, try to get ideas and techniques from. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Um, and, and I guess, uh, we, I mean, we asked this last time you were, you were on the show, but I kind of want to ask it again, see if anything sort of changed, uh, in, in the last year. Uh, one of our most reoccurring questions, which is, uh, what's, uh, in your opinion, the best thing and the worst thing about, uh, independent wrestling? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> um, the best thing? Oh God. Okay. We're not live, so I can think about this for a minute. <laughs> um, and marker. I don't know. I just <laughs> what what. And marker for edits. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to say anything that's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> and and feel free to take it in any direction. You know, it doesn't have to be. Uh -huh. You know. Well, let, let's uh, let, let's uh, give you some time to think about. It. Actually, I want to I want to touch on another topic real quick here. We talked. Uh, was it last week? We talked with Samantha Starr up here in VOW. And uh, talk a lot about kind of the state of women's wrestling. And they just had their Queen of the, Queen of the Ring tournament here with Vicious Outcast Wrestling here in Pennsylvania. Um, how are you? Uh, how? And we talked a little bit about her kind of entering pro wrestling as a woman and everything. Um, how has been the reception? Uh, you know, are you seeing a lot of opportunities for women's wrestling? Um, uh, you know, how how has that kind of reception been so far in your work, first year out there? Um, it's been good. I mean, especially with my my character I, I don't want to break kayfabe uh, <laughs> with, I just, with you know, just who you are right <laughs> yeah just like with who I am you know I uh, I think because I get a lot of opportunities to work like family based shows because I have a lot of kid fans nice so that's helped a lot um, and you know I'm not I'm not one of the the sexy pretty ladies so maybe that works to, you know against me <laughs> but uh I think, you know, because I'm fun, I'm upbeat, and people seem to really like me that, you know, promoters want to bring me over to, to give, you know, the audience some fun and some color and, you know, a little spunk. Definitely. But, uh, and and yeah. also, kind of, kind of what we talked with Samantha as well, do you feel uh, uh, that, you know, nowadays there's more opportunity for, for a woman, you know, besides, I guess, and we kind of talked with her, like, sort of, like, you know, just a, you know, normally it used to be just a women's match on a show and, and you know, two women and, and that sort of it. So the market, I guess, is kind of uh, smaller. Do you feel like there is more opportunity for, for females, you know, on the indies now? I think it's definitely growing. I mean, I've, a couple of shows that I've done, uh, the promoters have told me that they want to have more women's matches, but they can't find a lot of girls who are either experienced or, or you know, local for the show. Mm -hmm. Um so, you know, they'll have the typical third match as a women's match. But I think the audience is definitely, in, you know, I went, wrestled in Laredo, and they don't typically, typically see women. And uh, they had a lot of fun, and they really enjoyed I had a match with Machiko, and it went really well. So I definitely think uh, there are way more opportunities than maybe, you know, a while ago for females. And it's, um, you know, people are starting to respect Women, women's matches and women's wrestling more, mm -hmm. even though you still have the, uh, you know, there, you know, not not everybody, but 
Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> a, there's, still, there's still a stigma on, on women yeah. in professional wrestling, definitely. Um, so uh, going into it, uh, uh, also besides like sort of the, the um, uh, before we talk about sort of like that best and worst question, uh, some of the successes you gained a lot uh, uh, during your career, uh, uh, Sorg actually showed footage uh, from a recent, I know you're the current uh, RCW Angels champion uh, mm -hmm. down here in San Antonio. Uh, and, and to my knowledge, that's your first ever championship, if I'm, if I'm correct. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean what's, what must it be like to sort of, you know, finally gain that kind of big victory? I can't even put it into words. Um, when I when I won the belt, I I, I cried a little bit because <laughs> it's just a, it's an amazing feeling. It's something uh, you know. When I was a little girl, I always dreamed of you know being champion, and for it to be a reality now, it's just ah. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Uh, and I know upcoming as well, uh, uh, later this month, uh, you're also going to be involved uh, in the uh, Inspire Pro uh, XX Division Tournament Final to, with uh, Athena and Jessica James. So, uh, I mean, it seems like big opportunities coming your way, not just, you know, booking-wise, but also just, you know, the, those kind of, you know, championship and, and just, you know, oppor bigger match opportunities seem to come your way a bit more now. Yeah, I mean, I've been training really hard um, and working really hard, so it's it's nice to kind of see results from that people can see that you know i'm getting better i'm mm -hmm. learning more so and i also want to kind of bring up as well the uh one of the things i always hear about you a lot from other wrestlers is that beyond like wrestling wrestling in the ring or anything you know character wise or besides that uh your positivity i i feel like there's a lot of I think wrestling has a lot of stigma of being kind of, you know, a, a negative business or, or, or stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I've heard from a lot of wrestlers, you know, you know, you know, at shows that, you know, you, your confidence and also your confidence that's growing and also just your positivity in the whole thing. Do you think that's, a, you know, a very important part of it all? Yeah, I mean, I think having a positive attitude is, is everything. I even have a my little tattoo right here for PMA, positive mental attitude. And I think, you know, if you can just try to find the good in everything, it will help you in the long run. And just, you know, you're negative, then you're going to kind of see bad results from your negativity. But if you already stay positive, always look on the brighter side of things. It definitely, for me, it helps. It helps, you know, just keep my spirits up and keep my spunk going. Definitely. <laughs> uh yeah, definitely. And, and going into it, I, I guess that, um, you know, how far that, you know, that, 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 that translate a lot to you also in the ring, because I think, you know, your character as well is very energetic, obviously. Uh, <laughs> so, so does that come naturally to you, the fact that, you know, you, I, 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 for my knowledge, most places you're kind of a baby face, you know, uh, because of your character and all that stuff. Does that help you sort of, that, that kind of attitude in the ring as well? Yeah, I mean, it's just me. <laughs> I'm just really excited for everything. So. Definitely. I mean, it's sort of those kind of characters that, that people kind of like is the ones that are, you know, a, I, I forgot the exact term, but it's like a, a, a over-exaggerated version of yourself, you know. Yeah, that, that's turning, usually... uh, the volume up a little bit louder. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so so uh, I guess I guess wrapping things kind of up a bit, uh, 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 did, you have a, did you have a best and worst uh, of things that uh, uh, wrestling? And again, you don't have to be anything specific. We have a wide range of people say you know various different things the best thing the best thing i'm gonna say um i think just traveling and, and meeting people and and getting to know other wrestlers and you know why they're there and what they've done to get where they are and you know being able to learn from a multitude of people you know from all over everywhere <laughs> everyone has something different to, you know, tell you or, you know, a different tip or something they've learned that helped them. So it kind of, you know, makes your, your book of knowledge expand. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. No, definitely. <laughs> and then the worst thing, ah, I don't know. <laughs> people, I guess, uh, people just hating you and when you get successful or, you know, they just, yeah negativity when you know others become successful i think that's a that's a, the worst thing guys you know yeah 
I, I mean that you know going back to like what I mentioned, I think that, that there's a stigma of wrestling that it's it's like a competitive you know kind of that kind of business. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. Uh, so so thank you for coming back on on the show. It was a, it was a pleasure to have you uh, on once again. Uh, if people want to follow you on social media or if you have any upcoming uh, uh, bookings you want uh, people to check you out, feel free to uh, to plug away. Um, you can follow me on the Twitter at Del. Oh, I don't even know. Hold on. <laughs> I believe it's Delilah underscore Doom, okay. if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes. Okay, because I get that in and then my my Instagram mixed up. Hold on. Okay, yeah. So Delilah underscore Doom at Twitter, and then oh, okay, and then Instagram is Delilah underscore Doom, but I believe the O's are zeros. <laughs> That's why I couldn't find you. <laughs> yeah, they're zeros. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this coming Saturday, down here in San Antonio at Sideliners Grill, I am wrestling for RCW. Uh, my championship belt will be on the line in a weird three-way match. Well, no, sorry. It's a three-way tag mm. type thing. I don't know. It's really weird. <laughs> if I get pinned by, by Paige Turner, she gets my belt. But if, if Hernandez and Spectre get pinned by Dress to Kill, they win their belts. So, so anything can really happen. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be also, fun. <laughs> definitely, you can definitely go check uh, check out uh, Delilah Doom because uh, uh, I'm sure you will not be. Uh, you will definitely be entertained. I should say. Uh, it'll be fun. And then May thirty first, <laughs> Inspire, come see me. Hopefully, win the XX Division Championship. <laughs> and if you're definitely. on video, catch her dancing. There she goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a party before a Delilah Doom match, so it's, it's, that's amazing. I don't until I walk in. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so, so once again, thank you very much, Delilah, for coming on. Uh, and uh, I believe me and Sorg are going to dive into the stuff happening into the world of uh, independent wrestling. Awesome. Thank you all so much. That's right, Eamon. Hey, I got to attend uh, our friends at Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Remember those guys? Um, hey, of course, yeah. Of course, we talked with Samantha Starr last week about the Queen of the Ring. And that was one of the big uh, kind of attractions to go check this out. And I got to attend last year. Now, last year they did a Queen of the, they did something. They did Queen of the Ring by itself, but then they had a show the next day in their usual spot. Uh, right. Today, this week or this year, they they combined it. Um, really interesting format. They had semifinals basically, and then it ended up in a four way fatal four way. Hmm. So yeah, four way fatal four. Right. Uh, but anyways. Um, so, but uh, uh, Mary Elizabeth Monroe, who actually we just got information today, we're booking for uh, June 23rd, so we'll actually have her here on the show. Uh, won that one. A uh, really interesting mix of talent, and I'm going to try to pull up some information so I remember everybody's name. Because um, hey. <laughs> there was a couple that really stuck out there. Uh, of course, Samantha Starr in a match, uh, she did not make it to the finals. Uh, but I think there's going to be a little bit of payback on, uh, next month for that. Now, uh, you know, I was, uh, of course, really excited for the, the the Queen of the Ring, and I had I had an obligation I had to I had to deal with, and I wasn't sure if I was going to make this last uh, show. But uh, uh, then I saw Pedro DeLuca, who was on this show a couple Friend months ago. Show. He's a ring announcer. Okay, he's not he's a wrestler. One of, one of the best ring announcers. One of the best ring announcers, I think. Can I say in the business? Is that is that as far as the Indies go? I think, I think it's very right. fair to say that. Um, but he was in a in, in a match for the Anarchy title, which is basically their hardcore title, uh, with Patrick Hayes. I had to check this out. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, what? What? Um, What's gonna happen? You know. And to the extent where next month he's in a four way Anarchy title match with Patrick Hayes. He did not win this one. Spoilers, sorry. Um, but also including uh, Eric Ryan and uh, Ricky Shane Page. Jesus. Pedro's going to die. I've seen, I, I don't know what POW sort of considers, you know, cool for their hardcore matches or whatever, but I've seen Ricky Shane Page like, do, go through light tubes and, and barbed wire and, and all I saw him in Raw so. Math this last year at the DBI. By the way, the DBI 4 is coming up in uh, just under two weeks, actually. Uh, we'll be out there awesome. for that, but I saw them like battling in a church. They were con they were concerned about the ball shots that they were taking to each other. Um, it, you know that these guys these guys keep it very interesting in the ring, and I'm very excited to see what happens there. Uh, so uh, Pedro Pedro Hell is actually Pedro looked pretty good, I gotta say, uh, and and uh, complete with uh, Stone Cold Stunner spot, 
Hulk Hogan Hulk up spot, a lot of kendo stick action. Uh, it was pretty brutal. It was pretty brutal. Um, boy, I didn't I didn't even see him after the show uh, or anything like that. So, uh, but no, it was it was pretty tremendous. Um, also, a surprise chain match. They reorganized some stuff. And we had a chain match against friends friends of the show, uh, Facade and G Raver of Generation Dead. Uh, and, and again, like the chain match, you're hitting the post kind of thing. Um, like, uh, you know, just like the Russian chain match that was just on pay-per-view, right? Uh, I got to actually uh, pick up the chain afterwards. It was heavy. And these yeah. guys are flipping off the ropes and pulling each other off. Best of the night was when Fas- uh, Raver was going up for a spot, and Raver yanks on the chain and yells, get over here. That's pretty awesome. Complete Mortal Kombat spot in the middle. Of course, they started on the outside. They chained them up, like, on the outside after he got jumped by the entire... Uh, congregation is is the faction there. There's actually like four of them out there, five of them actually, um, with Gory and 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 uh, Aiden Bell, uh, I forget, E Bell, he's called there. Chance Prophet, for instance. I, I don't know. I, I keep forgetting who the big guy is. But um, uh, and so they started like outside, lots of chairs. You know, to point when people throw chairs in the ring, but nobody really wanted to because like I don't want to get thrown out and throw a chair in the ring kind of thing. Yeah. So plus they were all little kids in the front row. Um, but uh, <laughs> but but it was a lot of fun. It definitely I, I, I was tweeting a uh, greater chain match than Rusev and, and Cena. Uh, but I don't think that takes much to really do. I thought that was a low point of that pay-per-view, to be honest. So um, but no, it was it was a really fun night with that. Uh, great for uh, eight man tag, actually. Uh, friends of the show, uh, Andrew Palace and, and Chess Flex were actually uh, uh, tag team champions there. It's Fro Flex. Wait, no, Flex Palace. Sorry, different thing. Um, <laughs> uh, against the team of, get this, Super Beast and Super Oprah. Oh, my God. So those two on one team. And then and then uh, Dylan Bostic, who we've talked about. I don't know if we talked about him on the show, but he's a really great guy that's been uh, working around the area. And I think we mentioned him with uh, when Chris Larissa talked right, about him. Right, right. Uh... Him and Derek Direction. <laughs> against uh, uh, uh with uh, uh the, the gory and his congregation buddies so uh, you know eight man tag there between all those guys uh what hard hitting you know really fast paced really fun it, it probably like the, the first the, to be completely honest the first probably three matches were really kind of not hitting it with me or the crowd it felt like uh hmm. but uh but after they hit that that chain match i think they were full full on you know awesome. um uh, what's uh, jack Pollock? i think i'm getting the name right uh, he's he's a guy to look out for uh, if you haven't yet. I I know when I first saw him, he was calling himself like the sup- the social media superstar or something like that. He's he's been coming out and doing these uh, invitational things. He's got a match against uh, Jimmy Nuts next month, and by all accounts, that's going to be pretty tremendous. Um, they had speaking of weird tag team matches, they had one of those tag team matches where with the champion who's Gannon Jones Jr. Um, against uh, uh, Jimmy Nuts and another fella, and uh, it was one of those uh, winner gets the belt. Right. Kind of situations again, you know, kind of, kind of the same kind of thing, right? Um, Chris Lewis uh, was the kind of odd man, kind of the fifth wheel on that one. But I guess he's in a new faction with Gannon Jones. I haven't caught up since I've been there in February, and a lot happens at these shows. <laughs> if you missed one, um, and I'm wondering, and that's one thing I'm wondering about VOW is one. I don't think there's been a release since January, at least as far as our digitals on PittsburghWrestling.com, and I'm wondering if you can really pick up anything because our TV show is actually from several months back, right? Like, there may be shown TV shows from January or December at this point. Uh, so where somebody like me that wants to see what's happened, like, you know, we, t- we were talking with Samantha before the show. I'm like, uh, help me out. Are you still a champion? Because I haven't really caught up since I was there in February, you know, which is just, you know, I'm busy. I'm not going to catch up with every indie around. But um, but I'm wondering, like, what our, you know, this is, I think is an interesting discussion point is, is what's the jumping on point for indies, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Do you, like, I think, uh, you know, uh, you know, myself, like, I'm, I'm kind of in charge of putting the video stuff out for RWA, and I'm trying to find little things on each show. Like, we're putting out when there's an interaction between, you know, Mickey James and, 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 and Jesse Bell Smothers, uh, uh, you know, that's going to lead to the championship match the next the next show, for instance, right? So you can at least catch that on YouTube and say, oh, this is what's going to happen, right? It's not completely blind going into a wrestling show. I had no idea. Like Chris Larusso, Gannon Jones were pulling up these oh these the, this sign that I thought was just a really poorly done diamond cutter. Apparently, <laughs> they're part of a group called the Outcasts, for instance, right? Um, right. And again, maybe I will go deeper in their Facebook. I'll, I'll, I'll know a little bit more of this, you know. But but it was honestly though a really important thing in, in indie wrestling that I don't think um, I've heard this the, it a lot. Just talking uh, talking with other 
promoters and wrestlers. It's just the concept of the you can't expect the audience to know everything. Exactly. Exactly. It, you have to reiterate a lot of stuff sometimes. But, and, but and, there's and there's a little bit of like I, I think RWA gets a lot of the repeat customers. Um, Depending on where IWC is, there's I think the Clearfield people come to Clearfield and don't care about anything else. I think the Meadville people come that once a year don't care about anything else. Right. Generally, I know there's some across there's a crossover there, um, but you know even like RWA like you know I'm looking at formats like even RWA has like the one spot every show like se- after the first or second match where somebody comes out and talks about what the main event is. Like, yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a raw spot, you know, every, every, like yeah. they have to set something up, you know, and sometimes it flies, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's like, oh my God, I get it, okay, whatever, you know, but I'm there every month, so, um, yeah. but that's not for me probably, but it's make sure everybody's kind of on the same page, because, you know, even though there is, you know, whether they did 160 people on a Pens game day, which is pretty tremendous, right? Right. Uh, you know, uh, but still, that fluctuates. I think that's your low median of what they do over there. But there's still, you know, that range of 100 extra people that will come and go and not know, you know. And, and they, I would consider, like, an IWC, too, to be, you know, a company that does a lot of online stuff. And I'm, sh- you know, they, I'm mm-hmm. sure that's a problem they still run into. Like, I, that's a problem sometimes we run into in Inspire. We can't, you know, we can't expect everyone to know every story that we're doing. We can't expect everyone to have watched the, the promos on YouTube or, no. or, you know, read our website or whatever. I, you know, you know I, and I remember back early shows where, you know, going to IWC or some other indie show, you know, where I would hear uh, 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 music and feeling like the, the, the weird guy because everybody else is going, oh, my God, uh, you know, because somebody's coming out, you know, from, from before or something. I'm like, I have no idea who this is and why I'm supposed to be excited for it, you know. Right, but that's exactly. something that comes after time, after you've, after you've come to a few of these shows, you know. You, you know that. Oh, oh, by God, that's Sterling James Keen's music, you know, you know, or whatever it is, you know. It's, I think I maybe, you know, maybe there's a thing to hope of, like you know, if when you feel that kind of way, you know, hopefully a fan will go, well, I want to follow more of this, you know. Right, right, well, right, right. Depending on you know. Or or um, there was a, a a return. When was it? I think December. Uh, they did this in the IWC, where it was teased, Phoenix Rising, et cetera, et cetera, and it drops into the Metallica music for uh, <laughs> for Super Hentai, and everybody went nuts, right? There's enough people there that followed. They're like, I know who Super Hentai is. I know that's his music. Okay, it did, I think it did flash Hentai really big on the screen when we did it, too. So that definitely helps out. Um, well, maybe, the, and again, maybe they just thought they were going to see Japanese porn. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. I, I, some may be excited for that, you know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and also the series of, of confusing emotions that came out when Virgil was revealed uh, for the Reloaded uh, spot that we talked about with Plumber a few shows ago. Uh, yeah. You know, like there was a pop. I don't know. There was noise. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so enough of that. But uh, but no, POW, really good show. This was uh, uh, their, their Mayhem show, and, uh, and it was a lot of fun. And look forward soon. They'll have the DVDs on their site, of course. And uh, we'll have it uh, sooner or later over on PittsburghWrestling.com. Um, like I said, their January Judgment already looking great. I, I think that Jack, that, that Pollock and uh, uh, Jimmy Nuts match, uh, you know, from some of the talks I've been having with the guys, it's like that is going to be, you know, that's going to be aiming to be a killer match for the night, and uh, right. and I think there's a lot of cool stuff happening. Gory taking on Facade for that hypersonic title, which is basically a cruiserweight, of course. Um, you know, it, it's 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 always been, you know, uh, VOW. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, if, if you're really looking for uh, 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 like logic and storylines or anything, no, it's just it's just it's fun, and this is going to lead to the next thing, and this is going to lead to the next thing, and um, and 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 for somebody like me, you can't go to the ever show and just kind of pop in whenever I can. I have a blast every time I go down there. Um, what did I call it? Did I did, what, did I did I say that in the hangout earlier? Like I could look at a card for VOW, and it's like fantasy booking friends of the show. Because yeah. uh, because it's always been this like this this joining of people that we know from different groups around here and they always seem to pop up because they're mostly outside the, the the purview of Pittsburgh wrestling because they are like and I had to drive a good hour uh, to get out to this one from inside Pittsburgh so um, and, and it's cool to see what what people are doing you know, I will talk about what hope I hope to be a future friend of the show here in the coming weeks uh, Darren De Niro, where we're trying to 
get lined up here. He's a newer guy. He debuted. Uh, we talked with Joe Rosa about Faces of Fear. He was part of that group. Um, and, you know, to learn that he's up in, you know, Five Star doing something completely different. He's like, yeah, basically I'm John Cena, you know, up there. You know, I'm like, well, that's right. the completely opposite what you're doing here in IWC. I want to see it. <laughs> and, and I had a good conversation with him up in Meadville about that, you know, and uh, and I think he'll be fun. And also, it has a Tough Enough video out. So go look up Darren De Niro's uh, uh, Tough Enough video. Support it, share it. Um, I think I think he'd be a good pick for them. I, really, I mean, he's, he's fairly new, but I, I think he's got the look and everything that would, you know, WWE will do something with. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, uh, a really cool POW uh, let's see. Anything else? Anything else from that show that was really interesting? No, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, we talked about Discount Miz with Chris Larusso when he was on the last show uh, a few weeks ago. Yes. Uh, somebody chanted Discount uh, Larusso to this one guy. Uh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> so, so it goes down the chain. But anyways, um, also very alcohol fueled these uh, POW shows, which is the only one that I attend where. I don't, I don't even know if alcohol is allowed in the building. I just know there are drunk people there. <laughs> and um, they may be single-handedly supporting the loudness of the crowd. Um, and with very annoying noisemakers, for instance. So, yeah. um, But anyways, but it, it's interesting. It's fun. Um, and I love, again, I love their, their production. I love their look of the entrance and everything. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, that's all I got on that. ViciousOutcastWrestling.com. Show's coming up. Next show's coming up Friday, June 12th. That's off the top of my head. I hope I'm right. Uh, I know the next day after that is IWC Super Indie. It's going to be a crazy busy June coming up here. <laughs> How's like busy May? Holy crap. I'm going to yeah. experience in some way or another four wrestling shows, my friend. That's... <laughs> One, I won't be there. One, I'm going to have to post at it because I have a dance recital I need to go film. So, but anyways... It's a, but that's a, that's the life of, uh, of one sort of <laughs> Yes. Oh, you should see my calendar for this week. That's it. I've, I've said this so several times across the last week. Every time my schedule opens up, it's like a vacuum that fills with the oxygen that is other things to schedule for. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, so anything on your mind, indie wrestling-wise? Anything else we need to touch on? Uh, I do want to bring up that uh, uh, important thing in indie wrestling uh, – that we kind of talked about a, a little while ago when they did they originally did it. Uh, Beyond Wrestling announced that they are doing another uh, hashtag Raw alternative, nice, um, which is very good. Uh, I think uh, going back to the original one, uh, the message is very much you know to support the alternative, to support uh, very very almost kind of t- kind of bad timing because of how good tonight's Raw was. <laughs> but um, <laughs> didn't that almost happen the first time though? They kind of like, did. Didn't they almost. narrowly avoid they, a very exciting RAW? They had a pretty nice swing for a little bit, but yes. um, no, I, I, I still, I still think it is important because there is, you know, tonight was very good, but there's still a lot of negativity when it comes to the WWE and, and mainstream wrestling. Um, so, I think the big thing is just to provide an alternative and and to provide something for people to support monetarily um, that gives them something different. And this is what RAW alternative did. Um, Inspire Pro Wrestling got to be a part of it last year, and we will be a part of it again this year. And it is, it it, it was wonderful. It, it was so helpful for us getting our name out there, and 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 there were so many people that that got their eyes on us for the very first time, uh, and that's super important for any you know indie wrestling company. Um, and and the lineup has been announced. What companies will be involved in? Uh, uh, obviously, Inspire Pro will be a part of it. Uh, companies like Absolute Intense Wrestling uh, are a part of it again as well. A couple new people. Uh, uh, Chikara is going to be contributing as well as uh, Shimmer, uh, which is really cool to see. Uh, and then there's other groups like uh, IWA Mid South and uh, Freelance Wrestling, which uh, I hear a lot oh. of great things about. Um, so yeah, there's some really cool stuff happening uh, around that time, and it's going to be on May 18th, and that is uh, obviously a Monday. Uh, two weeks from when we are recording this. Uh, and uh, it's free live stream on Beyond Wrestling YouTube channel of some of these companies' best matches uh, for free. And, you know, it's it's a cool community to just share and watch indie wrestling and, and, and find someone you've never seen before and love them. Uh, I, I do think there are a lot of people who were seen for the first time from that Beyond Wrestling uh, uh, Raw Alternative that really kind of have made a name for themselves now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one of them that really comes to my head is uh, Speedball Mike Bailey out of Canada. 
uh, they showed his match with Kevin Steen from from a uh, C four wrestling, and now any indie company I can think of, he's booked there. Like he is, it's there's such a great opportunity that comes with this for the wrestlers, for the company, for the fans. It's it's all around. I think a really great idea and great uh, project, and and I'm proud to be a part of it. Awesome, awesome. If you checking that out, I'll be dual screening it as I did last time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, see which one catches my att- uh, attention more. You know, that's the true alternative. When you're right. picture and picturing basically with your TV and an iPhone, uh, this kind of thing. Hey do it right so, oh yeah that's awesome that's awesome um no i don't think there's any well oh, oh of course this weekend iwc uh i mentioned iwcwrestling.com um there is the road to super indie it's the dance a pretty big one a 4-1 dance with friends of the show ring of currently ring of honors dalton castle uh uh, uh colin delaney rj city and the champion, currently of the IWC, that's your international wrestling cartel, smart ass, uh, is Tommy <laughs> Dreamer. And uh, I think generally it's going to be a very fun show. Uh, that most of the crowd, I think the full card is released over here. Just to take a peek, of course, uh, Andrew Palace taking on Crimson for the Super Indie title. Crimson is doing some amazing stuff there. Um, again, somebody that's really kind of you know was put on the map with Prime Wrestling that I'm aware of. Uh, friends of the show like Jock Sampson and Brian Castle, the most Huggable Wrestler, by the way, taking on uh, Joe Rosa and Jimmy Vegas, uh, Joseph Brooks and Labar's Mystery Man. I uh, tweeted him ar- earlier tonight and said, my guesses for his Mystery Man are either Virgil or Doink the Clown. Virgil is always a really good guess. Yes, I, I, and as I've learned if recently. With a mystery that, anything on an independent wrestling show, just guess Virgil. Or you even better, perhaps the return of Mayor Mystery. Oh. We, I don't know, we were really over with uh, Mayhem Mystery. A mayhem mystery. Ooh, there you go. That, that, that's a spin-off. There you go. Maybe that'll be our version. It's really a uh, lunchbox under a mask. Um, but it's, it's going to be real <laughs> obvious. Like, it's not a good mask, right? Like, you know, like, covers here. So you're, like, you're doing your lunchbox, you know. Um, Super Hentai, speaking of him, against Justin Idol in a uh, Super Indie qualifying match. These guys are the guys that really uh, early... Uh, Super Hentai, the first Super Indie winner, actually. And a big history of that. I was uh, found a tweet... I think from like maybe a year ago or something from uh, uh, Smart Mark about how many years ago uh, the first Super Indie was, for instance. Uh, Joshua Singh uh, versus Alex Daniels. Both guys, I think both of us have had our eye on in some capacity here. Uh, I believe both Johnny both are, Gargano. Uh, from, yeah, uh, Absolute Intense Wrestling Academy under right. uh, Johnny Gargano. So. Right, right, right. Dylan Bossa, Keith Hot is going to be the third one. And of course, can I really forget Space Monkey? Let's talk about Space Monkey. Wait, I, is there I, more about Space Monkey? I don't know because I'm I'm just I, no. I just I just love talking about Space Monkey. <laughs> I I because Space Monkey I I know I like we so I brought up Space Monkey on this show and I was like oh that's amazing that's you know really really cool and then I I follow uh, uh, Alpha One Wrestling out of Canada which is uh, what actually one of the promotions that's going to be part of Beyond uh, uh, Raw Alternative. Uh, and Space Monkey's in their preview video uh, in, like, a six-man match. And, like, the, Space Monkey apparently gets around. And, and I'm excited about this. And I, I'm very intrigued to see what Space Monkey does. to the does point, did I the show team. the best of video I made of Space Monkey? I didn't put this on anybody's. Oh, no. I didn't put this anywhere but my own uh, my own YouTube. I, I did not want to. Because I, I just, this was my own appreciation of Space Monkey. Where did I put it? <coughs> Excuse me. Um thought i put it maybe i did put it on there so maybe i put it on mayhem show or something i don't know space monkey is coming to the iwc though um, i think you need to i think that needs to be shared to the public <laughs> people need to see what it, it's been around about. i mean it's been around a little bit but i mean check out this crazy video i was not a part of this i do not do all the video for <laughs> iwc pro wrestling and uh there's this ship coming and it's landing and and holy crap it's space monkey what the heck is this? It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, so I want good. to point out, I am not, I do not do everything video for I, I, IWC, and then sometimes they surprise me like this. Why are I'm you like, not taking credit for this? Take what? credit. I this. want so to right. take credit for this. It was fr- freaking amazing. And it's and it's Space Monkey. I don't know who to give credit to for Space Monkey. He's a mystery. He's a mystery wrapped in an enigma uh, between four turnbuckles. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I, this is why. This is why I love indie wrestling. This is why we do a show about indie wrestling. Crazy bleep like this. 
if it's, if we were if we weren't trying to veil it up, we would just do Space Monkey Cast. Because oh, do the, not tempt me. Do not give me <laughs> ideas right now. I just started two podcasts last week. Uh, I, I, it, it's this podcast is just going to be Space Monkey Cast, like, and and the the surname is the Indie Mayhem Show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is like the dance. Super, the super it just <laughs> a little bit, right. All right, that's all I got. I, I I don't think there's anything else worth talking about after Space Monkey this week. No, not at all. So. but but there was definitely. I mean. Let the, uh, there's any wrestling everywhere, so so yeah. and you, you, and you guys are you, out there. I was at VOW and uh, oh, I had a couple people come up to me. Oh, nice! That that usually now usually I hear from the wrestlers, right? Because I feel like we're in the circle. We have well, I'm on the show. They said love it. You know, when am I going to get on the show? Uh, that does happen. I'm not. That, this freaking happens, and it's, it feels really cool. But having you know fans say, "Hey, you know, I listen to the show," da da da, da you know, and and that's always really weird. You're at least some kind of wrestling personality, right? I'm not. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is weird to me. So, um, but thank you very much for everybody who's uh, said such uh, kind things about the show. Please, if, if anything else, support it by sharing it uh, with other people, other you know, wrestling boards, anything like that. You think people will dig what the kind of conversation we're having? Um, and not just a, you know, really wrestling blast fest. Like it seems like all the other podcasts out there are, you know, if you're not Cole Cabana at this point. <laughs> and sometimes if you're Cole Cabana. Oh, well, sometimes if you're Cole Cabana, that's, that's true. Or if you're JR, Jim Ross. So, yeah. It's exposing the business. <laughs> yes. Um, so on that note, hey, Eamon, he's at Eamon too. Please check out inspireprowrestling.com and everything going on there. Great, great stuff. Um, I love the Phil Singer game artwork that's coming out for that kind of stuff. Um, uh, great to see. Great yep. things happening down there. Uh, all my stuff's over at SorgatronMedia.com. Please support uh, one Bobby F. Jadetown has a vine for Tough Enough. And also um, Sawtooth Willie has a, vi- has a video that has Share those been. those two around. Get them on. The fact that neither of those are on the recap videos on Raw upsets me greatly. Did he submit the vine? I, I hope he did. I hope he did too. I know it's only like six seconds, but submit it. Why not? It, it, it just doesn't have to be more than a minute. No, be... I mean, let's be honest. If you get, I, I, I mean, I think if any of us gets into tough enough, none of us are passing a physical, right? Yeah. I submitted a video. You got to look for it, but it's out there. I'm looking at it right now. It's over on my personal channel. You know what that is. Go check it out. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know about sharing it. I, I, don't, I don't feel good about it. If you like it, you can share it. Nine people have watched it so far, so but I said I'm like what you know what the heck what what do you got to lose right you know I'll let you know who's the, who's the who's the guy this year who's who's the trainers this year it's not Stone Cold right I don't think they've announced it's not Bill DeMott so you're not worried about that I'll let hey, Norma Smiley good. kick my ass for a couple of weeks until I get eliminated whatever right it's a terrible idea. So. <laughs> maybe the, maybe the, I'll I, wear the hockey outfit. I don't think we can podcast from a hospital bed. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, we can. Can we? Yeah, we can. We can roll that. We can oh, really? Do can it. we be the first to do that? I'm sure we won't be the first to do that. Oh, I'm telling <laughs> We can say we're the worst. <laughs> yeah. Or the first. Yeah. You know what? I'm right. We can also say we're the worst. Yeah. Let's, let's be honest about that. This is the lo- longest outro ever. No, we've done longer. I'm sure. Uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please check everything out. Uh, all the links to this and other great, great shows on iTunes, on YouTube, wherever the heck you find us or want to find us. We're out there. If there's a platform I'm missing, you can't find the Indie Mayhem Show. You plug it in your little search box and it does not come up with what our wonderful with faces or the artwork with Shima Zion on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, let us know. We'll get on that. We get yeah. on that. We just added a lot of stuff to tune in. I don't know if it works yet, but we just added it. I got the email that says that we're going to be in that stuff. Um, I think you can listen to radio on that. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on all kinds of fun stuff there. So, uh, And uh, you can join us typically live.wrestlingmamshow.com, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, whenever the heck it is Central Time. I don't even know anymore. Um, and uh, follow us at Mayhem Show on the Twitters and drop us a line, good times at wrestlingmamshow.com and all the other places. Big thanks to our friends, sliceonbroadway.com, boltpittsburgh.com, also supporting the network here. At Wrestling Mayhem Show, and again, PittsburghWrestling.com, IndieWrestling.us. For your indie wrestling download and DVD buying needs, from especially the Pittsburgh area, and uh, so much more. Finding Zach Gallon is another great documentary we got over there. I'll push that enough. More people need to find that. It's a great story. And I think yeah, definitely. I, I wish I could find more ways for people to hear. <laughs> Netflix, call me. 
get that on that. And it's a story. Sell it to them. What's that? I, I, I'm, Netflix, I mean, come on. They, they got to be picking up a story like that. I mean, it, yeah. it really is. Yeah. You got to. Uh, it's. I looked into it. It's, is it? It's about the money. It's about the money or the buzz. That's what. It, and, that, and that sums up independent wrestling. <laughs> yep. That's it. That's it. We'll see you guys next time. Please support some media wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. Bill is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.